government's assessment continues as it works toward the distribution of the Chinese low-income housing units by year-end. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. The house was shaking, shaking, then said the story here, babe, crack, 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 and the roof had gone. Man, I was so scared, I nearly wet myself. Only those who have lived it can truly understand the devastating fury of a hurricane's wind. The house across the road just get up and roll over. Hurricane force wind, it's a hazard. Hazards. Take control. Reduce your loss. You can hurricane-proof your home. For example... Make your roof more wind-resistant by using screws instead of nails in its construction. Find out more about hurricane force winds and other hazards at your local disaster office. A message from the National Disaster Management Agency and Sidera. With the details to the news for Monday, August 15th, I am Rikisha St. Louis. Grenada's Minister for Social and Community Development, Housing and Gender Affairs, Honorable Philip Tellesford, says retrofitting must be completed on the Chinese low-income houses before they can be distributed to residents both on the mainland and Kariku by December. The possibility of adding a laundry room is been looked at. This, Honorable Tellesford said, can be done through a public-private partnership. The minister visited Karieku recently to assess the arrangements for the houses that were handed over to residents there earlier this year. Government is seeking to ensure that the units, a gift from the People's Republic of China, are ready for occupancy. Minister Tellesford, who joined his colleague Minister for Kariku and P.T. Martinic Affairs and Local Government, Honorable Tevin Andrews, for a tour of the housing site at Dumfries Kariku last week, said in keeping with his government's transformation agenda, they will like the beneficiaries to see the units as not only a place to live, but also as an avenue to continue uplifting themselves. The ministers were joined by permanent secretaries Javon Williams, Anne Isaac and Veronica Charles. Medical officials are warning that the number of gastroenteritis cases on the island is still high, with 2022 accounting for a significantly higher number of cases when compared with previous years. With more than 1,200 cases for this year alone, children under the age of 5 account for 397 cases and children 5 and over as many as 887. Gastroenteritis is an inflammation of the stomach and intestines caused by a bacterial or viral bug. Pediatrician and Director of Medical Services Dr. Taisha Donnell says Ministry of Health is trying to determine the main cause of this increase. We also have to look at which organism, which virus or bacteria is causing this gastroenteritis because you have some of them that are highly contagious mm -hmm. and some of them that are not as contagious as others. Um, we, of course, when we saw that, um, that spike in the number of cases of gastroenteritis, um, um, our CMO and the EPI unit thought it very important to do some tests so that we can determine you know, what is the cause, what organism is actually causing this outbreak. And so this test revealed that the, the main culprit for this outbreak is the norovirus, all right, which is one of the common viruses yes. that causes gastroenteritis. Now, norovirus, take note, it's highly contagious. It's very much so. Right? Within 12 to 48 hours of contact, you start to present mm -hmm. with the symptoms, you start with, you know, feeling unwell, the vomiting, the diarrhea. And it lasts generally up to about three days. Dr. Donald says managing gastro at home while caring for children is easy. She advised the parents whose children are experiencing vomiting as a result of gastro to wait at least half an hour before trying to rehydrate their children. When you vomit, please note, vomiting means that you bring up your food or your water or whatever you, 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 you project it out of your mouth. And in the meanwhile, you're having a bit of spasms in your stomach. Mm -hmm. So your stomach muscles are like trembling, so to speak. They're having spasms. So if you just vomit it and you drink right away with a stomach that's still having spasms, you would vomit again. 
right? So this is a little thing that parents sometimes, you know, they because we say he hydrate and hydrate. Yeah. So they sometimes miss the hydration in this case that has to be on pause for a bit. Right. So if a child vomits no, you have to wait for at least half an hour. Right. Right? At least half an hour before you give anything to drink. So you vomit, let's say, at 6 o'clock, maybe by 6.30. If you could wait longer, no problem. Because in hospital, we would wait for about three hours. Okay. Right? See, see. Yes. Good. But you know, in the hospital, you might have your drips going and yeah, all of yeah. that. But home, you don't have drips. Mm -hmm. So we will say at least half an hour. Right. So you rest the stomach for half an hour. And then you start with cold, clear fluids. Cold and clear. Clear means water coconut water, apple juice, Pedialyte, all these type of things. Right. It's clear, clear fluids. So we try to stay away from the milky milky stuff because they do a milky and sweet because they cause more vomiting and diarrhea. Mm. Prime Minister Honorable Deacon Mitchell commends the government and people of India for their years of friendship and commitment to Grenada. The Grenadian leader joined members of the Indian community on Sunday in commemoration of their 75th anniversary of independence. He says relations between Grenada and India date back to over 100 years and commends the Indian community in Grenada for its continued contribution to the local economy. The anniversary celebrations included a flag-raising ceremony at the Sir Eric Matthew Gary Botanical Garden, which was also attended by Ministers Joseph Andal and Andy Williams. The Indian independence movement or anti-colonial movement sparked freedom movements throughout the length and breadth of Africa and the Caribbean. And to some extent, Grenada is a direct beneficiary of that movement. So the people of Grenada are grateful in that respect for the contribution that the anti-colonial struggle of the Indian people has directly led to our benefit and to our independence as well. But as my colleague Joseph indicated, the relationship between the island of Grenada and India dates back 165 years ago. And it started in the beautiful parish of St. Patrick. Also present at the ceremony was His Excellency Wei Hongxian, Ambassador of the People's Republic of China to Grenada, Honorary Consul for the Republic of South Korea to Grenada, Jerry Seals, and Mr. Clifton Ali, Honorary Consul for the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago in Grenada. This is the National Report. The news will continue after the break. This is Sammy coming back from Juve. Here comes Sammy again. This time, he is hurrying to join the fancy mass band. It is now after carnival. Sammy and Robbie are liming on Wall Street. Come on, Sammy, man. Guys, where are you throwing your bull? Oh, you do have respect for the environment, or what? You got just one bone and the dog eating that just now? Well, yeah, not only dog, rat too. Throwing bone on the ground so the scars rodent. And besides, you don't looking good, man. God, man, I mean, this kind of talk spoil you, spoiling the line, man. Relax yourself now. I can't relax when, when you're dotting up the environment, so do the right thing. All right, all right. Nice. Then we head for the garbage bin. Let's keep our islands clean. Take your garbage with you if no bins are available. Don't throw garbage out of vehicles and on the streets. Stop. Think. Use the bins. A message from the Department of Tourism and the Grenada Tourism Authority. Welcome back. Young men involved in the Empower program have now embarked on another part of their journey, direct skills training. This began on Monday and follows a meeting last Friday with Ministry of Youth Officials at the Grenada Trade Center. We get more from Communications Officer at the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture, Eugenia Peters. Young men under the Empower program have now begun direct skills training, which represents the program as a third component, following the registration and soft skills training. 
210 participants will move into CVQ Level 2 training in areas like graphic designs, plumbing installation, general agriculture and construction, and commercial food preparation. 99 will receive certification training from Grenkeys in areas like auto mechanics, electrical installation, woodwork, and plumbing installation. 20 of the registered young men will move directly into apprenticeship on the job training. On Friday, a meeting was facilitated by the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture with the young men as they prepare for the next step towards pursuing their various career paths. Permanent Secretary Mr. Norman Gilbert encouraged them to make full use of the opportunity presented to them by the ministry. This program was designed for you. It was designed to help you, young men, to be able to make changes in life. If you were a participant in this program and has not seen any change in your life, then something must be wrong with what we have delivered or something must be wrong with what you have interpreted or accepted, right? You have an opportunity, you have a chance. Walk through that door, get your biscuit, eat your biscuit, right? But I want for you to be able to successfully complete at the end of the year. Acting Youth Coordinator and Empower Project Officer Mr. Earl Williams said the training will begin across training centers on Monday, 15th August. Additionally, he said following the direct skills training, the participants will be eligible to receive a grant fund to kickstart their own businesses. Every one of you sitting here, there is a grant fund with a value of 2000 400 EC dollars waiting for you. It is built in the budget. So when you complete the project, every one of you, once you complete the project and you satisfy the criteria, every one of you would be qualified to receive a grant fund value, not cash, value of $2,400. This cohort of the program is scheduled to end in May 2023. From the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture, I am Communications Officer Eugenia Peters. Thank you, Eugenia. Finally, in the news, the selection of a new senator to represent the interest of the fishing and the farming communities in the Senate will take place on Tuesday. This is in keeping with Section 24, Subsection 2C of the Constitution. Three senators are to be appointed by the Governor-General, acting in accordance with the advice of the Prime Minister. Agriculture and fisheries or marine resources continue to be one such sector where it is deemed necessary to have a senator appointed to the Upper House of Parliament who will examine, assess and promote government's policies relative to the agricultural, marine resources and blue economy sector in the interest of the people they serve and represent. The selection process is scheduled for Tuesday, 16th August at 3 p.m. at the Duluc Cinema, Grenville. Individuals and organizations are required to present a valid farmer or fisher's registration card or ID. Mr. Fitzroy James will supervise Tuesday's activity. That story just ended the National Report for Monday, August 15th. Let's recap the top story. Government's assessment continues as it works toward the distribution of the Chinese low-income housing units by year-end. On behalf of the entire news and production team, I am Rakesha St. Louis. Thank you.